Alrighty, I am going to make an attempt at a short video in installing the new PTO bearings <clears throat> on a XLT 600 crankshaft. Um, so first thing you, you need is preparation. So the crankshaft has been in the deep freeze for about an hour, um, basically to get the shaft steel as cold as possible. The bearings have been in a little toaster oven for about half an hour at uh, 350 degrees, and that's to expand the bearing. Uh, so those two temperatures will make the bearing bigger and the shaft smaller, so it should all slip together a little easier. Um, if things go well, I'll be able to just slip them on by hand. If they don't go well, need a brass drift, the right size for the inner race of the bearing, so you don't damage the bearing, and of course a uh, persuasion tool. Okay. Other thing you need to do for preparation is know your orientation. So there's my little sketch, it tells me which orientation the, the pins and the snap ring need to go on the crankshaft. And there we are. So we're all prepared. The crankshaft is cleaned up. It's cold. The bearings are cleaned up and they're hot. And I'm going to go get them and see if we can get this to slide together nicely. So there's the crank. Here's the bearings. First one, the snap ring bearing. Slides right on. And the spacer. And then the outer PTO bearing. With the pin on the outside. Slides right on. There we go. Done deal. Didn't have to use a hammer at all. Sweet. Now we'll just wait for everything to equalize in temperature and then we'll get that slipped into the crankcase and start putting this engine back together. Okay, so just a little extra features and tips here on this 600 XLT uh, rebuild. Um, with the uh, crank bearing replacement. Um, these two bearings here are the ones that, uh, that had failed. This uh, machine, this is the first time, well, for as long as I've owned it, which isn't all that long, but it's the first time the crank bearings have been done. Um, and I say that based on how difficult they were to get off the shaft. Uh, the machine has, oh, what does that say there? I don't know if it shows up on the camera. Anyway, 3,670 miles. Um, apparently, the XLT uh, uh, PTO bearing failure is a common issue. Um, this one probably went a long ways because we never really ran it very hard. But um, the common issue seems to be, or from some research, is the, uh, the oil holes each of these holes lines up with one of the bearings on the crankshaft, okay? Um, the end hole here, which actually feeds two bearings, um, the original is very, it's really quite small. It's like smaller than a Bic pen, 
diameter. Uh, the other thing is, uh, hopefully you can see, shows up in the camera. The other thing is the, uh, the notch around the hole. You can see where the bearing sits. The notch around the hole, that notch needs to extend beyond the edge of the bearing for that oil to be able to pass through up and down um, through the holes. On the uh, mag end bearing, you can see that there's about that much of a gap that's left when the bearing is in there. You can actually see the, uh, the discoloration on the bearing. That's where that oiler oil system sits. On the PTO side, original, this slot was actually very small and the, the outer PTO bearing race actually completely covered the slot except for just a very thin, maybe one eighth of a opening at the end of that slot. So what I've done here is I've hogged out the slot all the way over to the, uh, the gap that's between the two bearings. That's a shiny, shiny spot. So I've hogged the, uh, the slot out so that it can, the bearing race is going to be sitting here. So now there's space for oil to come through there. I've also increased the size of all the oiling holes, especially the mag side oiling hole. And of course the, uh, the PTO bearing oiling hole. This hole is now oh, probably three, four sizes larger um, than the original. These are one or two sizes larger than the original. And this is two sizes larger than the original. Uh, each hole is also um, uh, chamfered so that uh, there's good drainage into there. You know, after all of that, I mean, let, let's talk reality here. This is, a, it's a two-stroke engine. It sucks and blows. <laughs> sucks and blows and the oil and the fuel goes wherever it needs to go. Uh, it's it passed through the raceways, it passes through, uh, through the crank, uh, it passes through these holes, one end to the other. It's gonna go where it needs to go. Um, wherever you can uh, increase uh, the passages to, to allow that to flow more freely, uh, the better the engine's going to breathe and the better lubricated the whole system's going to be. So I hope that helps. Um, I've seen uh, lots of lots of talk on the forums and photos of the mods. Um, here's a video that maybe, hopefully, um, gives you a pretty, pretty good idea on uh, what it actually looks like when it's done. Okay, I just put the upper case half on so you can see what it looks like in the, uh, in the holes there. Um, uh, hopefully it shows up on the camera. Anyway, mag side bearing is there. Inner crank bearing, inner crank bearing. And you can see the bearings through the hole and I hope you can see, can you? You see the gaps where the, so the oil can get through alongside the bearing. That one shows up pretty good. And that one lighting doesn't work good at this spot. And then of course there's the uh, the PTO end. So here finally, before when you looked down looked down that hole, well, you could just see the bearing race. You couldn't see any gap or anywhere for the oil to go. So now you see the outer the outer bearing race. And the inner bearing race is here. All right, there we go. Hope that helps, folks. The old 696, uh, 600 XLT will be breathing fire again, probably uh, tomorrow. <laughs>